Good evening. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. Our Mass is celebrated for Loretta Bolio Stanton. Announcements. We are now on our summer schedule with Masses at 4 p.m. on Saturdays and 9 a.m. on Sundays. Weekday Masses resumed last week at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The second collection today will be for the Catholic Communications Campaign. Had it not been for the communications ministry in our diocese set in place nearly three years ago, it would have been very difficult for us to have been so well connected and informed throughout this pandemic. As always, your support is greatly appreciated. We have reached 63% of our partners and charity goal for the parish. Here's a new, easy way to contribute. Text the word DONATE to 84576. You will be connected to a confidential and secure site which the Diocese of Worcester manages. Parishes will receive credit for all gifts made. Any amount you can donate will help us get closer to our goal. Next Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, also known as Corpus Christi Sunday. After all Masses next weekend, we shall have 30-minute quiet adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. Jeremy Medor, our videographer, is that what you are? Wave. Hasn't he done a tremendous job? So not only does he do this, well, as he's doing this, he's hooked up the big honking TV we have downstairs, you know, the beautiful, huge, enormous screen, and he has hooked it up so that when he is here live streaming, it's also on the television downstairs. So if we reach that magic number of 50 people up here, uh, the overflow can be seated downstairs, and the seats are all six feet apart, so it's safe, and you may get downstairs to uh, watch the Mass. And I believe Father will send someone down, or. They come up for communion? How does that work, Father? We'll send someone down. We'll send someone down. Just a reminder about the singing. No singing. <laughs> but soon, I promise. Our opening hymn today is All Hail, Adored Trinity. Please stand. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. We're going to celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. I'm going to begin with a little bit of a bias or exaggeration, and forgive me for it. I think here at St. Boniface we have the most beautiful and most unique image of the Blessed Trinity. If you look up there, you see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we gather to celebrate the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We celebrate God's presence in our lives. That's what it really means. Because their relationship overflows to us. And so we gather in gratitude for who God is 
in our lives. Let us call to mind our sins. Ask God for pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. soul may rest in eternal peace. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth, the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of the eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. The first reading is reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Second reading is reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another. Agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. set the stage for us. All this social distancing, masks, regulations have made us yearn for closeness that we had before but we cannot yet. And this gives us with a lot of anxiety. And as experts are telling us, the pandemic has strongly impacted a certain section of our population, the poor in our country. And does their death not numb us? Might we pause and ask ourselves, and not even give those scripted answers, ask ourselves why? Why these people, a certain section that is not close to us, is dying, and why? The events of Minneapolis last week, and I don't want to repeat them, I spoke about them last week. This may be the final time, I don't know, I speak about them. But they have unearthed all wounds in our country that are wounds of closeness. How close do I want others to be? Do I value their dignity, their life, in the same way I, I, I value it for me? Do I want others 
to have the same prosperity in life and rejoice the same way I want to? And if not, why? Why don't you want them to be that close to you? The Feast of the Trinity is about the closeness of God, the closeness of God in within Himself. We ponder the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, and they are close. Their relationship is so close that it overflows to us as human beings. They exist one for the other, totally one for the other. That one's role may fully accomplish the other's role. That's what they exist for. Their closeness is not exclusive, but is for the other, for others. I feel, in my own interpretation of the readings, the challenge of today's readings of the Trinity is that we exhibit the same closeness as the God that we come to worship. Their relationship that they have must be seen in our own relationship with our closeness with others in our own lives. In the first reading, Moses has a prayer before God. He comes before God and kneels before him. Moses is always unique because he is, in the scriptures, is the only person who has direct access to God. He is the person who is most close to God throughout the scriptures. He is the only one. But when he gets close to God, he gets face to face with God, he always remembers the other. And when he's there, he asks, he says, if you find favor with me, God, you know, thank you, but could you look at my people? They're a little stiff-necked right now, but pardon them, give them forgiveness. And that was because they had, uh, he had gone up the mountain, you know, to get a new uh, set of commandments. You know, when he came down the first time, he found that they had made a calf for themselves, who were adoring an idol, he threw it down, got broken, now he had gone back asking for forgiveness, and his closeness to God was not only for him, but for another. Moses' closeness to God is for others. The Gospel told us, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. What does that say? It says to us, which is the central part of the readings, it says, God's closeness to the world is so that he might give his son. His closeness to the world is for others. That others may not perish. That's why we gather every Sunday. Because we know God's son, Jesus, is with us and we want him to be with us in our own lives. A closeness for others. The son of God was sent into the world not to condemn but to save the world. The same thing is being said, closeness for others. And so my humble prayer this Trinity Sunday is only one. For our nation, this nation that I have adopted as my home, a nation, that God may give us the humility to stop and re-examine our lives with one another. We must rewrite our closeness with others. We must mend our ways with others. How can we be a people who live in peace and threatened by the presence of the other? That the closeness of the other may not bring hate, but may bring the love of God to flourish in us. May the way of God's closeness between the three of them, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, rub off on us. And for the Christian, the standard of the gospel is very high. You see, when we say that we are followers of Jesus Christ, the standard is really high. Because to know God, to be close to God, is to manifest God, is to be like Him. To love God is to communicate the same love to others that He communicates to us. So let us pray that good Lord may give us the grace, the courage, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with everyone. In the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us now stand and profess our faith. For we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let's lift up to the Lord some of our prayers and intentions. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the unconditional love of the Trinity may strengthen and inspire each of us, deepen our love for one another, and help us to witness God's love and mercy to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish communities, that the life-giving love of the Trinity may flow through us so that we may be untiring in supporting the lonely, consoling the grieving, encouraging the struggling, and forgiving those who have injured us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all married and engaged couples, that their witness of love and self-sacrifice may be a reminder of Christ's self-giving love for us in all the human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater sense of community, that we may be freed from the individualism and grow in our appreciation of each person and their role in the family of God, so that each person may know that they are appreciated and valued. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that God will free the world from the virus, heal those who are afflicted, and protect others from the disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed, that God will ease their fears, give them courage to pursue new opportunities, and open new pathways to support themselves and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in our cities, that God will give courage to all who are working for peace in neighborhoods, help the voices of those who have experienced injustice to be heard, and turn the hearts of those prone to violence toward new ways of working for change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Loretta Bellow Stanton, that they may rest in God's eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We conclude our prayers with prayer of Mary as we pray. Amen. And Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you, my woman. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now is the hour of our death. Amen.
Let us now proclaim that our sacrifice will be accepted to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of His name, for I will the Lord of the Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son, the Holy Spirit, you are one God, the Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equal of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and the archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who will never cease to cry out each day, as one voice they are claiming. By sending the Holy Spirit upon them like a dewfall, they will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the times we betrayed and willingly to his passion, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. Give it to us his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sapo Zenit took the cup again, giving thanks and praise, he gave it to his friend and disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Reverend Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to her as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, the Lord, the church spreads out the world, brings out the fullness of charity to the Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, or the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters, especially Loretta, who remember this Mass, all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them now to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, St. Boniface, our patron saints, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coherent with eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior told us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us peace in our families and in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, the way the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Peace of the Lord with you always. We show to one another a sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes all the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the suck of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, the word of my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand and pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of mind and body, so as we confess your eternal trinity, that we may remain in undivided unity. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Amen. Have a good weekend, everyone. Amen.